art. Another aspect relative to LSI's uh, desire for efficiency is that if they use larger trucks on some of these narrower streets with parking both sides, I don't see any efficiencies resulting from having to go fishing for trash cans that are stuck behind cars or having to skip those trash cans and then get the phone call, please come back tomorrow and pick up my trash. And so I think LSI needs to revisit their own perceptions of efficiencies through this program and perhaps find that the alley service is more efficient than using the larger trucks on the streets with all of the interference from the cars and other problems. So. So this isn't a public hearing, but it is a public meeting. I think I'm hoping that we've kind of um, addressed folks' concerns, but on this part, you know, I'm not talking about anything else that's been in the newspaper lately. We'll talk about that later. But that that will come up at a future meeting, I, I would imagine. Uh, but as far as the alley collection, um, you know, if, if somebody else has comment on that, you know, Go ahead, Gary. I think probably people are interested in the recommendation of the committee, oh. whether they need to comment or not, what your preliminary well, recommendation Well, I think, our, would be. you know, <laughs> it's kind of putting the, well, let's put the card out there. I think our recommendation is alley. to go ahead and stay with stay the alley. alley. You know, I, I don't. Until we can revisit and get some better information Absolutely. specifically from LSI and cool. looking at what alleys need to change and what ones are okay, what level of truck service needs to go through there. We're operating here kind of without all of the information we need to have. But uh, I think we're aiming towards it stays just the way it is right. until we can get everything better nailed down. Yeah, it needs to go to full council for that decision next Monday, Tuesday. Um, and if you discover that there's a block or two blocks where going to the street can work and discuss it with the people involved, if they understand that there are ways to do it, and there may not be, or maybe, then I would I would leave it, you know, with alleys. Um, I've got a couple of other issues with Tim here. When you're ready, but if you want to try one more time, you guys okay with well, to talk to us. you guys are okay with recommend recommending staying with alleys, so we stay with it. Does anybody want to come up and say anything? They said they were changing the dates. You, you need to come up. Name and introduce yourself and everything. Name and address, please. My name is Ryan Rounds. I live at 1021 East F Street. Okay. I was just wondering, uh, they, the letter that I got said they were changing the alley service and they were also changing the days. Did I hear you correctly? The days will stay. So, all right. New days. Thank you. All right. Pam, correct. The days will change. Yeah, the, the days will change to what you were told, but it will still be alley service. And but the letter is correct in terms of, of the days. The days. Service. Okay. I mean, that, but that is subject to change again. So. In three to six months or something. Come on up if you have something. I'll be kind enough not to repeat what I said last time to you. I don't know who you are and where you live. I'm Roberta Radovich, 809 East B Street. Okay, thank you. Um, I just asked him about truck sizes. Apparently, the current recycling trucks that make it through our alleys without difficulty are to the best of his memory, the same size as the newest sidearm large trucks. The small trucks that have been servicing our alley with the back pickup, which can actually pick up from both sides of the alley easily, are even shorter than that. Those are the trucks that seem sensible to me to maintain in our alley areas. One error in thinking is that somehow the new trucks are sized um, unsuitably larger than the old ones. I don't believe that's true. I think that needs some verification before it's accepted. Yeah, that's well, that's why we got know. the 120-day. Yeah, We're so that's, that's something I'd ask to be okay. actually verified. Thank you. Um, there was a question that came up at the council meeting about how the alleys somehow received less service in terms of snow plowing. That is, in fact, an advantage because when the snow plowing occurs on the streets, you get the two foot high berms. In the alleys, you don't get those berms. And it's a little bit more pack on the surface of the alley, but still 
very much more um, accessible in terms of pickup of trash cans. Okay. Okay. I think that's good enough for me. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Anyone else while we're while we're playing here? Okay. My name's Bobby Kelly, and I live at 517 North Garfield, which is one of the old streets in the old right. part of town that has an alley, and it's very convenient. You're lucky. I couldn't wrap my head around how I was going to get those carts out to the street anyway. To the living room. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, or wheel it down the alley and up the street and around. <laughs> thank you very much. I just wanted to say thank you. I think this is a real example of how local government works. I was very upset when I got the first postcard. I emailed Mr. Steed last week and explained why. <laughs> and I got an email right back saying, we've heard lots of this and we appreciate your comments and come to the meeting. And here I am, and you all are apparently on the same page, and uh, you understand our concerns. And I just think I just want to say I appreciate it, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Don't make us just talk trash to get you to come back to come back to see us. Um, you got anybody else? Anyone else? I'm Gail Cochran, and I live at 520 East B Street. Um, my alley also has an apartment building across from it. And when they pick up the apartment dumpster, they come down and they pick up my garbage as well. Mm -hmm. So I called the city, and I was expressing my concerns about no more alley pickup. And I said, they pick up from the, uh, from the department. And they said, oh, that's a different uh, garbage truck. Uh, that doesn't seem efficient to me. If I, my garbage is there, pick it up. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I mean, we don't really have control over how inefficient they decide to pick up your garbage, whether they're bringing in different trucks for that or not. But I understand what you're... So that's in a whole, kind of another side issue. Right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? You don't live in Fort Russell. No. <laughs> Victoria Seaver, 121 North Lily. So, no, I don't live in Fort Russell, and no, you're, I'm still on alley service, okay. but I would cringe at the thought of changing because I don't see how you could do it. I'm in high density, so it's just not going to happen. But, but I want to reinforce a lot of what you said, that, that you have to leave space between now a garbage and a recycle and the cars you don't want to pick up with the fork and right. dump into the back of the truck. I have uh, an apartment building next door to me, and it has a dumpster. And they come down the alley, and they get that dumpster, and they and they can get the recycling carts. And I'm with you. Late LSI already needs to prove itself, you know, before they start asking for more money. And bigger isn't necessarily better. And if what's working is working, that's what you stay with. So, and these these issues are very very. Important, very, very real and important. And it's not safe for people to have to go all the way down an alley and come around. We get it. We get that. Yeah. So I thank you. Thank you. And, and I just want to support everybody. And God forbid you come to my neighborhood because I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Walter. Okay, two more things, Gary. Tim. Um, there's some problem with lids fitting, apparently, correctly on the new single screen totes. People, I've started hearing comments I've had a, about them. I went out and checked mine. <clears throat> mine fits perfectly well on the large on the large recycle bin. I've had what, a, what can you say to that? I've had a handful of phone calls um, regarding the lids not closing completely. I will say that these lids came off the original load of carts, and when those were shipped, they were nested, so all the lids were flipped over backwards. If those continue to be a problem or they're not operating correctly, obviously we'll get Latos Sanitation out there to correct the problem. I mean, that's part of the contract is to make sure that these things are operating correctly. So switching the incorrectly <laughs> ordered cart lids to the new carts should work. You've got some concerns about <coughs> them being the shipped, shipped 
where they were cocked open or in the summer when They've they been were cocked when it open was more than three months yeah. and as you see it's been yeah. below, and it's freezing below freezing for some so time they, yeah. and they're out of shape so but if, but if somebody really wants it changed out get a hold of you at 883-7131 or your um, your email is on the city website and you will yeah. have somebody come address the particular issue yeah. okay so you figure they might melt back into Compliance. Obviously, when it warms up and they get used a few times, things are going to loosen up. They're new. They've been switched over. That type of thing. So, um, okay. And okay. And one other, Gary, I would like to visit the question of where to store these cars. This five feet away from the house, not in your garage, et cetera, et cetera. I would like to get that on a immediate future. Public Works Finance Committee meeting, so we can look at that. That's not ready to be addressed today, but to talk to the fire chief, to the city attorney, to yourself, or who and Tim about why the requirements, what the requirements, and can we do anything about it? Um, I, I I'm hearing I'm hearing about that too. Yeah. <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah, you'll recall when we went to the um, bins, the roll carts. Um, International Fire Code uh, regulations were such that anything over, I believe it's 40 gallon 40 parts, gallons. could not be stored inside a garage. Now, it seems ridiculous to us as well that you can't have a garbage tote in your garage, but you can have a vehicle full of gas or a lawnmower or things like that, chainsaws and cans of gas even. So, um, but the International Fire Code is the International Fire Code. So that's why it's stamped on the carts. Certainly, we can come back with at least a full explanation. Um, <coughs> some of these cart companies, when we originally talked to them, uh, either were unaware or it wasn't an issue for them. Um, and they were surprised that the International Fire Code actually addresses that. And, of course, it's a safety issue. And right. um, people, some people seem to not believe it, that you shouldn't put hot coals in a plastic garbage cart which can cause issues, and, and that's really what they're after. But certainly we can bring that to you, give you the, the code and the interpretation um, that we looked at before we ever were going to And just to tell you ahead of time, my question is going to be, can we modify that code sure. in the city of Moscow or not? And, and just, I don't think anybody's going to get a ticket for putting their garbage can in their garage. So that's... <laughs> The other, Dan said, Dan would, said that. the other comment I would like to make is that these roll carts, when used it as intended, are entirely safe. Yeah. They're used when around used as the intended. world. <laughs> and they're going to spontaneously combust. They're not spontaneously combusting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Did you have something else, Art? <laughs> All right. Anything else for the good of the order? No, today? sir. You guys got anything else? No, sir. We'll consider ourselves adjourned. Thanks, everybody.